Hi and welcome to another card making video where I'm using pattern paper to create 10 cards. For my project today I will be playing with the Studio Light Winter Garden collection and in this collection you can find pattern paper as well as stamps, dies and stencils, however for today I will be playing only with the paper pads. Now my favorite of those three paper pads is this one which gives you many many die cuts that you can just pop right out of the page. You will find that the pad includes about 300 paper elements and these are my favorite type of pads. Notice that this one doesn't have a border. It depends. Some of them do have a small border, other cutouts don't. I'm just taking out a few of those shapes so you can see how they look and how easy they are to separate from the pad. You will find the pad comes with two pages for each of those designs. Again, the collection is called Winter Garden and it has a lovely color combination. I will be playing with this paper pad to create 10 cards today. All of these cards are going to be clean and simple and very easy to recreate. I am browsing through those pages so you can see the designs, bigger and smaller, and you even get many, many sentiments. For my cards today, I won't be using any stenciling, any inking, any stamping. Everything is going to be based on these paper pads. Keep in mind that paper pads is a great and inexpensive way to create cards. This paper pad is less than $10. I believe it's $8.99. In the same collection you will find two more paper pads, these are again 6x6 and they provide more like background papers. This one that I'm browsing through has mainly brown and earthy colors, while the other one is more into greens. I will use all three of them to mix and match and create my 10 cards, but in any case you can simply buy the one with the die cuts and recreate what you see by using backgrounds from your stash. Let's start with the first card. I have already picked some of the die cuts from the pad and for my background I'm going with this green pattern paper and I create a panel that's four and a quarter by five and a half. This is going to cover up completely a standard card. I also created a smaller panel using my double stitched rectangle dies. These are going to give a lovely but very subtle um, definition on the edges. However, if you don't have such dies, you can definitely use your paper trimmer to cut out a panel. For this card I went with that wooden house with those snowdrop flowers and for the sentiment I went with cozy snowdrops and I'm going to add the second one that says love the first flowers in winter. All the sentiments that I'm using for today come from the same paper pad. I have a few more smaller snowdrop flowers which I'm going to use to embellish my house. And finally I will add a few pearls just to add some extra something on an otherwise very simple card. I absolutely love how those cards come together so quickly and at the same time they look beautiful since everything you use comes from the same collection and they match perfectly together. And let's move on to the second card. This time I'm going to play with those two lanterns and I'm also going to pick up that branch in the same page. This of course is in fast forward, as I'm separating the elements I always take my time making sure that I don't tear anything. You will find that if you take your time and go slowly you can easily separate them with no issues at all. And I'm browsing through the background papers looking for one for this card. I decided to go with this one, again I'm going to cut it to 4 and a quarter by 5 and a half. Again, same idea, I do have a smaller panel that I did a die cut with my double stitch rectangle dies and I'm going to create a composition on top of that. The die cuts that I'm working with do have a white border, so if you do have a white background, they are not going to show as much. That's my little tip for all those die cuts that have extra white border all around and you don't want to get into trouble to fuzzy cut around them. Putting those cards together is really quick and simple, however, it's not as fast as you see it here after the video editing. Of course, I take a lot of time, I pop out many elements, play with them, try to decide what goes well with something, and once I'm happy with the composition and I feel like it is pleasing to the eye, then I turn on the camera and glue things together. Also, another question that I get for my 10 cards videos is how long it takes me to make these cards. And to tell you the truth, it's really difficult to answer this question. 
since I don't make all those 10 cards in one sitting, I may create one or two cards and then go for grocery shopping or something, then I may come back to them the next day. It really depends on the day. However, I have to say that when I'm creating cards using pattern papers, they are really, really faster to make than using stamping and coloring and die cutting, etc. So here my card is almost finished. I'm adding some gems just to embellish it a little bit more. And you can see here a close-up photo. And let's move on to the third card. I'm going to pick out that lovely image. It's a winter image with snow and a couple of birdies. And there is a frame that fits perfectly on top of that. The fun part is that you can even pop out all those little insides on the frame. So, of course, that gave me the idea to create a shaker element where I have snow falling behind the window. So here I'm using my scissors and I'm cutting out a piece from my acetate that fits at the back of the window. And then I'm going to use some double-sided tape. You can definitely go with glue here. However, I didn't want to make a mess. Sometimes the glue oozes out and um, makes it super difficult to keep that acetate clean. I'm going to peel it off and then stick that uh, acetate on top. And my lovely window is ready. I'm going to use some foam tape to go around that window. And for that I'm using uh, these foam strips by Waffle Flower. These are really handy for these thinner areas. If you peel it off, you will be able to follow the curve of the window. I'm going to make sure that I don't leave any gap for the shaker element to fall out. I'm adding my confetti inside, and this is by Simon's stamp, and then I'm going to cover it up with the image. And my shaker element is ready. With this shaker element, you don't really need to do a lot on top of a card. I decided to go with this pattern paper as my background. I'm cutting it out to be slightly smaller than my standard card to end up having a border, and I'm going to stick that panel on top of my base card using foam tape. Then I'm adding some glue at the back of my window. I didn't need to add any foam tape. It is dimensional already. And uh, just to give that cozy look and feel as if you are inside the house, I did stick on top one basket full of uh, wood. I'm also going to add sentiment. And again, all the sentiments come from the same die cut pad. Absolutely love the color combination of this collection. It's uh, soft, cozy and earthy and creates also perfect masculine cards. And here is a close-up photo on this card as well. Let's move on on the next card and for this card the camera was out of focus. Bear with me, this is a really quick card and very simple to put together. So all I did here was to use that uh, green and white striped panel. This is uh, four and a quarter by five and a half. On top I used the wreath that I popped out in the beginning of the video. I embellished the wreath with a few branches as well as a lantern. And all I do is to just browse through the pages to find the elements that would go lovely with my composition there. So here I picked a candle. And for my sentiment I went with hello there. I also embellished the card with a few pearls and here is a close-up photo. Moving on to the next card and this time I'm going for a landscape card. Again I have cut out a white panel using my double stitch rectangle dies and then I'm creating a little scene on top using a branch, a little birdhouse and a bird on top. This one is going to be a birthday card so I picked three sentiments from the pad and uh, when I put them all together, it's going to read, A little birdie told me it's your birthday. And I'm going to grab my background paper pads. I decided to go with this one. I'm cutting it out to be four and a quarter by five and a half. And I will place my panel using foam tape on top of that. So all I need to do at the end is to embellish it with a few gems and also stick that on top of a standard card that's four and a quarter by five and a half. We are up to card number six and I'm going to use this light brown paper to cut out a panel with a window in the middle. I'm going to use foam tape at the back 
and I haven't removed the backing. I just placed that temporarily on top of my card and I'm going to glue down my die cut. Now this is a little image that I picked from the pad with the die cuts. I'm using glue so that I can easily uh, slide it until it is perfectly positioned. And then I'm going to peel off the backing and stick it there. Probably this is the simplest of all the 10 cards that I made for today. For my sentiment, I went with paper hugs that I'm going to pop inside that window. And then I have a secondary sentiment that says the happiness of getting a card in the mail. I also embellished my card with a few gems. And here is a close-up photo. For my next card, I'm going with this lovely pattern paper. You can use a rectangle die to cut out a piece. You can go with a portrait or a landscape card. And I have a bunch of die cuts that I popped out from my pad to embellish this card. Now, I do have a lovely little scene, but I'm going to add some extra elements on top using foam tape to add some dimension and make it look extra special. And of course, since there is a nest with eggs printed out in my background paper, I did go with uh, one of the birds and I'm embellishing the nest all around using some uh, feathers as well as uh, a few branches. Again, for this card I went with two sentiments, free as a bird, oh how I wish I could fly. And as with all the rest of the elements, I do use foam tape at the back of my sentiments too. And of course you can keep on adding elements on your cluster. There is a fine line between overdoing it and not adding enough. I don't know exactly where that line is, but um, trust your instinct and uh, just uh, make sure that it is pleasing to your eyes. Here I'm just trying to find out what would go best for a background. I decided to go with a dark green one, which I'm going to cut to four and a quarter by five and a half, which is going to cover up completely my card base. And here is a close-up photo on this card as well. And let's move on to card number eight, and this time I'm going for a winter little scene. I'm using this pattern paper as my background. And I also cut out a snowbank. I do have some dies to cut out these snowbanks. However, if you don't have such uh, dies, you can definitely use your scissors and cut out a scrap piece of white paper in a curve. I'm going to pop that on top of my panel. And I did use foam tape at the bottom just to make sure that I have some dimension. I'm going to use my scissors to chop off the excess. And I have already picked a couple of die cuts from my paper pad. And I'm creating my little scene, placing my snowman on top of the sleigh. I think it is super adorable. And I have some extra die cuts to embellish my card even more. One of them is this um, sign. I'm going to cut off the top since I don't need that. Now from the fence I'm using my scissors and I'm going to cut out just one of those wooden planks. This way I will end up with a wooden post where I can stick the sign on top of it. I'm placing that with foam tape on top of my card base and then I'm going to finish it off by adding some white dots using my Nouveau Drops. As you add the snow, make sure that not all those dots are the same size. You can have larger and smaller and you can even add snow on top of your snowman or the sign. I decided not to since I didn't want to mess up things. Absolutely adorable, probably goes on my top favorites from this batch of cards. Moving on to card number 9, and this is going to be one of those cluster cards where you pick up lots of elements and try to create kind of a composition that is pleasing to the eye. So I'm starting with this tag. On one side I'm sticking a birdhouse and then I'm going to embellish it with a branch of leaves. I also have a stack of letters that I'm going to place down there. I do have a wooden slice that I think matches perfectly with the lovely colors on this card. And since I cannot stop here, I'm going to add a little balloon. For my sentiment, I went with hello there, which I'm going to glue on top of my tag. And this is where I was debating whether I want to add this branch or not. I decided to add it at the end, but it would look uh, beautiful without it as well. 
I used the light brown pattern paper as my background. I used foam tape to pop that panel on top. And I'm going to call this card done. Here is a close-up photo and notice that I did embellish it with a few pearls as well. For my last card, I wanted to use this bird on the brush. This is the first design that I was thinking of doing. However, I'm going to switch into a window card. Not a shaker card, just a window one. So here I'm sticking this background paper on top of my card base. And this is going to be the background that you can see through that circle cutout. And inside the window, I'm going to place the lovely bird on the branch. You can just stick a sentiment and call this card done. However, there are so many die cuts in that pad that it is really hard to stay away from them. So here I'm just creating a little uh, cluster on one side of my circle, just using a few images of uh, cotton buds as well as feathers. For my sentiment, I went with warmest thank you. And I'm going to add one extra cotton bud on one side of the sentiment again and finish it off with some gems. Here are some close-up photos on this last card for today. And now let's take a quick look on all the cards that I made for today using the paper pads from the Winter Garden Collection by Studio Light. And I have to admit that one of my favorite videos to put together is when I make 10 cards using just paper. And I haven't even used half of what is included in this pad. You can see here how full it still is. I can make many, many cards using that. Plus, I do have the background papers, which I use just a few of them. Here is a heart for you if you are still here after 16 minutes of card making. Thank you all so much. In the description, you will find links to everything I used. I hope that you had fun, that you got inspired, and until next time, Stay strong and safe.